Hi, we're here with Peter Hogan, author of Resident Alien. Uh, and today we're going to be asking questions about the comic and the eventual TV adaptation that's happening. Uh, hi Peter, how's it going? It's going okay, we've had a good day. Yeah, yeah. sounds excellent. Uh, so, what inspired you to create this series? Uh, it really came out of the fact that um, Steve Parkhouse, the artist on this, we'd worked together before and I wanted to work with him again. And I said, Steve, what do you want to do? And he said, something to do with aliens. And it kind of just flowed from that. Yeah. Uh, your your setting takes place in a very small town, and yeah. it has a very small town vibe. Uh, yeah. Could you tell me what was uh, the inspiration for that? Like, what, why did you pick a particularly like small local town and like the, the people in the community there? Well, I think the the thinking was that um, this was somebody who would want to kind of hide himself away from the world as much as possible um, because he crash landed and he's just trying to keep a low profile so as the comic begins he's been doing that for a few years until the local doctor dies and the police rope him in to look at the dead body which happens in the tv version as well um, and he slowly gets sucked back into it but i figured he'd pick us you know, he picked somewhere in the middle of nowhere rather than downtown Manhattan. <laughs> uh, what were some of the noticeable changes, do you think, uh, between the TV show adaptation and the comic? That, yeah. Well, they've, um, they've kind of done their own thing with it. So, you know, there are bits of the comic that's in there and uh, bits that they've kind of, you know, come up with um, an alternate version. Mm -hmm. uh, so... Uh, it's not entirely faithful, but it is very enjoyable. So. Mm -hmm. so we may end up with you know people that like one and not the other, or we may end up with people that like both. We'll see. Uh, how do you feel about Alan Tudyk's performance as the main character? And... I think he's wonderful. I think it's perfect casting. Yeah. So I'm very pleased about that. Well, uh, especially because the, uh, the the visual differences between having a human actor and then yeah. the alien. Uh, well, they had problems with... Uh, I mean, I think Chris thought about having him as an alien all the time. Mm -hmm. um, but there were sort of... Uh, it would have meant, you know, somebody spending... F not necessarily Alan, but I guess it would have been Alan. Spending four hours in makeup every day. Um, and also, I think it would... It's the kind of thing that um, uh, might have been a little confusing for a TV audience. And also, it's easier to identify with a human actor. In the comic, I thought about changing back and forth. I thought, no, that would be confusing. It, would, it would, would work on TV, but not in the comic. And also, in the comic, um, the fact that we had him as an alien all the time uh, was, A, kind of intriguing for people, because you know everybody around him, even though the reader sees him as an alien, everybody around him treats him as an hum ordinary human being. Um, but the advantage also from a, a comics perspective was that even when you've got a sort of, you know, quiet, domestic, you know, dare I say even boring scene going on, you've still got an alien on every page, mm -hmm. which makes it, you know, more intriguing, I guess. Uh, in the comic, you delve more into, like, the spiritual elements and, like, the Native American backstory. Uh, I think they're going to I think they're going to get to that in the... Uh, you know, forthcoming episodes. Oh, okay. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, yeah, I, I talked to Chris about it last night, and I, there definitely will be a bit of that going on. That's awesome. Uh, how do you feel about the comedic beats? Because they, they've added a lot of more comedy to the... Uh... Well, it's the kind of thing that... Um, I think there's comedy in the comic. Oh, no, it absolutely just, is. You but... know, it, it might be a little gentler, um, yeah. but... Um, uh, but I think it works well, you know. I mean, I don't think, you know, it's not entirely comedy. You yeah. Know, the, the, the drama is still there. Yeah. And, you know, there's quite a lot of different layers going on. So, no, that's fine. Uh, the big change that I noticed, uh, minus the spoilers, was uh, the, the main character and that particular motivation he has being on Earth. Yeah. Um, how did you feel about that? Was, like, was that an idea that they pitched to you that you were... Like okay with, or do you think it was more for TV drama? I understand why they did it. Okay. You know, I mean, it's like um, 
in the comic, I think one of the big strengths that readers related to was the fact that here you had an alien who wasn't here to, uh, you know, abduct people or, you know, kill people or, you know, any of the usual kind of alien tropes that we've seen a lot of. He was just a nice guy who was stuck on Earth. Uh, and I think people really related to that. In TV, I mean, I understand why Chris did it. It's because it, it, to get TV interested in it, they have, uh, they're more used to the idea of a character going on a journey and, uh, you know, that kind of arc playing out over a season or whatever. So, so that's pretty much why they've gone for it, I think. I don't object to it particularly, um, but it's just one of the things that I accept that, you know, any adaptation isn't going to be 100% faithful. I'm just glad they've done an enjoyable one. Uh, given your background in comics, uh, what do you think was different about this approach to this story compared to some of your other previous work? Well, as a comic? As a comic uh, creator, yeah. Um, I don't really know. I mean, I kind of didn't pay any attention to what anybody else was doing. Um, <laughs> you know, Mike Richardson at Dark Horse fell in love with it, thank God, uh, and kind of pretty much allowed me to do what I wanted. So, um, I think it's kind of its own thing, and the people that have discovered it prior to the TV thing happening seem to like it, uh, so now hopefully it's going to get a bigger audience. And it looks amazing. Like, Thank I, you. I, yeah, I no, watched, he's a wonderful artist. Yeah, I read the uh, the first trade back, and then I watched the pilot just now, and it, yeah. everything's about this incredible. Um, so, uh, final like words of advice you could give to somebody who is trying to break into comics, uh, something that you wish that you, as a younger version, uh, could have heard from a mentor or somebody that would give you sagely advice? Uh, God, do a lot of reading. <laughs> <laughs> and not necessarily comics, you know. I think one of the strengths of... Uh, I look at comics and, you know, I think the same thing is true now that was true 20, 30 years ago, which is... You get people drawing on the same material as inspiration. You know, they'll they'll draw, they'll look, they'll watch the same movies, they'll read the same comics, and so it kind of all recycles the same stuff. I think if you read other things or watch artier movies, you know, you might come up with something that's a bit more different, and uh, and that's probably um, I think something that separates you from the herd, makes you stand out. You know, is probably going to do you some favours in the long term. Awesome. Thank you so much. Good.